जय राधा माधवी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर हरे यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन
जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिब्राज काचार्य अष्टोत्र शत श्री श्रीमद अभय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपाद की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिब्राज काचार्य अष्टोत्र शत श्री श्रीमद शिल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय नामाचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड श्री गिरिराज गोवर्धन की जय व्रज भूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की जय पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जय गंगा देवी यमुना देवी की जय तुलसी देवी भक्ति देवी की जय युग धर्म हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जाय बृहद मृदंग ट्रांसेंडेंटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की जाय श्री श्री गौर निताय की जाय श्री श्री कृष्ण बलराम की जाय श्री श्री राधा श्याम सुंदर की जाय पतित पावन शिल प्रभुपाद की जाय ऑल ग्लोरिस्ट दी असेंबल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस्ट दी असेंबल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस्ट दी असेंबल डिवोटिस All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga, and all glories to you, Sri La Prabhu Pad. Sri La Prabhu Pad ki. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राशु भद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवत की So we are reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 46, Texts 41, 42, and 43. Yatha, Brahmarika, Drishya, Brahmyativa, Mahi Yate, Chitte, Karitari, Tatratma. कर्तेवाहम धिया स्मृत यथा भ्रमरिका दृष्ट्या भ्राम्यतीव महीयते चित्ते कर्तरी तत्रात्मा कर्तेवाहम धिया स्मृत यथा भ्रमरिका दृष्ट्या भ्राम्यतीव महीयते चित्ते कर्तरी तत्रात्मा कर्ते वहम धिया स्मृत Vaishnavis, please. यथा एस भ्रमरिका बिकॉज ऑफ वर्लिंग अराउंड 
दृष्ट्या इन वंस विजन ब्राह्म्यति वोलिंग इव एज इफ मही द ग्राउंड ईयते अपीयर्स चित्ते द माइंड करतरी बीइंग द डूअर तत्र देर आत्मा द सेल्फ करता द डूअर इव एज इफ अहम धिया बिकॉज ऑफ फॉल्स ईगो स्मृता इज थॉट ट्रांसलेशन एंड पोर्पोर्ट बाय द बिलविद सर्वेंट डिसाइपल्स ऑफ इज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शील प्रभुपाद की ट्रांसलेशन जस्ट एज अ पर्सन हु इज वर्लिंग अराउंड परसीव द ग्राउंड टू बी टर्निंग वन हु इज अफेक्टेड बाई फॉल्स ईगो थिंग्स हिमसेल्फ द डूअर when actually only his mind is acting please kindly repeat just as a person who's whirling around perceives the ground to be turning one who is affected by false ego thinks himself the doer when actually only his mind is acting purport Shila Vishwanath Chakravarti gives a parallel idea although our happiness and distress are caused by our own interaction with the material qualities we perceive the lord to be their cause since i have been instructed to cover 42 and 43 as well we will read them yuvayor eva naivayam atmajo bhagavan harihi sarvesham atmajo hyatma pita mata sa ishwara translation The supreme lord hari is certainly not your son alone this is uddhava speaking to nanda and yashoda uddhava is speaking to nanda and yashoda the supreme lord hari is certainly not your son alone rather being the lord he is the son soul father and mother of everyone दृष्टम श्रुतम भूत भवद भविष्य स्थास्नु चरिष्णुर्महदल्पक विनाच्युतावस्तुतरा वाच्यम सर्व परमात्म भूत ट्रांसलेशन नथिंग कैन बी सेट टू एक्जिस्ट इंडिपेन्डेंट ऑफ लॉर्ड अच्युत नथिंग हर्ड और सीन नथिंग इन द पैस्ट प्रेजेंट और फ्यूचर नथिंग मूविंग और नॉन मूविंग ग्रेट और स्मॉल ही इज इंडीड everything for he is the supreme soul purport shri uddhava is re- relieving the distress of nanda and yashoda by bringing them to a more philosophical plane he is explaining that since lord krishna is everything and is within everything his pure devotees are always with him granthraj shrimad bhagavatam ki yeah. hari krishna by the instruction of his grace dharmatma prabhu i am sitting here i am utterly unqualified and i feel like a rabbit in the presence of mighty herd of elephants all the wonderful senior vaishnavas and vaishnavis all of you present here you have been serving shrila prabhu pad for more number of years and decades than i have spent time in this body so i am simply speaking to fulfill this instruction and to purify my heart it is not instructive to anyone in any shape or form if i speak something which is favorable to the practice of bhakti you may kindly accept it and offer your blessings and if anything that comes out of my mouth is not in line with shastra all of you can kindly forgive me chastise me correct me and reprimand me i am trying to simply serve shrimad bhagavatam on dharmatma prabhu's instruction so i beg for all of your blessings may the right words come at the right time in the right spirit of serving shrila prabhu pad and shri radha shama sundar may by your blessings i serve all of you this morning vansha kalpa karo
Dear Shruta Kirti Prabhu, I would like to start by offering my gratitude to you. When I read your What's the Difficulty, I really felt that although I have never seen or met Srila Prabhupada, I felt I got closer to Srila Prabhupada through your writings. <laughs> I loved how the stories are short, crisp, sweet, relatable, with a nice, wonderful lesson at the end. So, thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I said that to one devotee, I feel like reading that book again. He said, you should. What's the difficulty? <laughs> so this morning, <clears throat> we are studying Srimad Bhagavatam. In the glorification of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Please kindly repeat. Janmantare Kritam Punyam Tada Bhagavatam Labhet. Only when one serves Krishna for hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes does Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam enter their life. This is a verse from the Puranas. Janmantare Kritam Punyam Tada Bhagavatam Labhet. Only when one sincerely tries to serve Krishna for many, many lifetimes does Srimad Bhagavatam become pleased and enter the life of that devotee. How glorious is Srila Prabhupada's service that people like me, I have not served Krishna in my past life. But through the book distributors and through the devotees, Srimad Bhagavatam walked into our life. Therefore, Sada Sevya, Sada Sevya, Srimad Bhagavati Katha, Yasya Shravana Matrena Hari Chittam Samashrayet. Bhagavatam has been glorified in the Padma Puran and the Skanda Puran that how many times should we read Srimad Bhagavatam? How many times should we speak Srimad Bhagavatam? How many times should we hear Srimad Bhagavatam? And how many times should we distribute Srimad Bhagavatam? The verse says, Sada Sevya, eternally. We should never think that I have read Prabhupada's books once, that's enough. Puna Puna Charvita Charvanana. Prahlad Maharaj says, those who are demoniac, they serve their senses again and again. Similarly, those who are devotional, they serve the senses of Krishna again and again. So, Sada Sevya, Sada Sevya, Srimad Bhagavati Katha. These pastimes of Srimad Bhagavatam should be read, spoken, heard and distributed again and again. Why? Yasya Shravana Matrena. Just by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Hari Chittam Samashrayet. That Hari whose lotus feet we should take shelter, he resides in the heart of the listener. And it's so beautifully described in the Srimad Bhagavatam that by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, avarudhyate trakritibhi sushru shubhi tatkshanat, Krishna enters the heart of the listener and the door shuts behind him. So he can't leave. <laughs> one time one devotee was very beautifully explaining that if you take a straight bottle and you try to push something that's crooked, it'll never enter. If you take like a crooked object and you try to push it through a plastic bottle, it'll never enter. And if you try hard, it gets in and never comes out. So he said, our heart is like that. And Krishna has a threefold bending form. <laughs> he takes time to enter, but once he's in, he never leaves. Therefore, yat gatva, Tumar Ridaye Sada Govinda Vishram. Huh? Srila Narottam Das Thakur and our Acharyas have said, in the heart of pure Vaishnavas, who are always distributing Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna resides in full potency. Therefore, Tat Shrunvan, Supatan, Vicharana Paro, Bhaktya Vimuchen Naraha. Bhagavatam must be read, Bhagavatam must be heard, Bhagavatam must be distributed, Bhagavatam must be lived and prayed for. But what is the order? Tat Shrunvan. Bhagavatam says, hear from the lips of senior Vaishnavas. Supatan, read it carefully. Vicharanaparo, contemplate on how I can bring the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam to my life. And then after tasting this nectar, the fortune of bhakti, share it with everyone. Therefore, Janma Sarthaka Kari, Karaparo Upaka. So in today's discussion, we want to backtrack and take a few steps behind just to understand the background of what's happening. <clears throat> Yesterday His Grace Bhurijan Prabhu mentioned about Srila Kavikaranapur. 
So I would like to follow in his footsteps and continue from there. Srila Kavi Karanapur very beautifully describes Krishna's thought process. He describes that when Krishna returned from Ujjain, from the tutelage, from the, the teaching of Sandipani Muni, he describes Krishna came from Gurupur to Madhupur, which means he came from Ujjain or Avanti to present-day Mathura. And after Krishna came back, it is described by Srila uh, Kavi Karanapur that Krishna was so much in separation from Vrindavan that in Mathura he was crying. And he said, the Brajbasis are in so much pain, but one good thing is they have each other. Because there's an old saying that when you have pain and you share it with someone, your pain becomes half. So Krishna's thinking, the Brajbasis, the residents of Brindavan, they have each other to share their distress. And therefore, naturally, Krishna's thinking, I believe that's reduced for them. But I have nobody to share my heart with. So as Krishna was looking in the direction of Brindavan and burning in the forest fire of separation, Krishna couldn't hold himself. He went running to Balaram. Krishna Balaram. Shri Krishna Balaram Ki. Yeah. So Krishna went to Balaram and held the hand of Balaram. Shri, Krish, Shri Kavi Karanapur describes, he went to Balaram and he started to cry. And Krishna said, being here in Mathura, I feel like running to Brindavan. I came here, I killed Kamsa, and now I have put myself in such a predicament. I can convey my heart's feelings to the Brajbasis. After I killed Kamsa, O Balaram, everyone in Mathura who was held captive, they all went home. Because in Mathura, Kamsa had imprisoned and imprisoned many people. Some from South India and some from North India and the Eastern and the Western part of the country. But after Kamsa was killed, everyone went home. It was a festival for all the prisoners except one person. And that is the person who liberated everyone. That is Krishna himself. So Krishna held the hand of Balaram and he said, Oh dear Balaram, my desire is I want to go back to Vrindavan. Balaram said, I think we should go together. <laughs> but there is a very big problem. What is a big problem? Balaram said, I don't think Devaki and Vasudev will let us go. I don't think they will let us go. They love us so much. And especially for Balaram, he's, he's with Vasudev and Devaki after 11 years. Vasudev is the father for Balaram. And Krishna's heart, along with Balaram's heart, is both in Vrindavan. Both start to cry. Krishna told Balaram, should we just cover ourselves and in disguise run to Vrindavan? Balaram said, I think there's one person we should consult. And that is Mother Rohini. My mother. Balaram said, I don't do anything without her permission. Except when I stole butter with you. <laughs> I did that without her approval. But now that we are in Mathura, I think we should go to Dev um, Rohini Devi. And we should consult and ask her what she feels. So Krishna and Balaram went to Rohini Devi and said, Oh dear mother, our heart runs to Vrindavan. Please advise, what should we do? Rohini Devi looked at Krishna and Balaram and said, Now I want to speak my side of the story. She said, You know when both of you left Mathura and went to Ujjain, something special happened. Krishna immediately interrupted and asked Rohini Devi, did the residents of Vrindavan come here to Mathura searching out for us? Rohini Devi said, not once, every single day. Every single day, some or the other resident of Vrindavan would come running to Mathura with sticks in their hand, loudly calling out, Krishna! Krishna! Balaram! Balaram! Like this every single day. And since they didn't hear any echo, they went back to Vrindavan. Rohini Devi said, not one day passed when they didn't come. Every single day they would come and search out in every street of Mathura to ask the residents of Mathura, where is Krishna and where is Balaram? And many of them didn't know. So Krishna asked Rohini Devi, did the Brajbasis know that we went to Sandipani Muni's ashram? Rohini Devi said, no, they never got to know. So every single day they were in the hope that today we will find Krishna and Balaram. 
and they were disappointed. Balaram said, can you describe their pangs of separation? Rohini Devi said, the heart of the Brajbasis is like freshly blossomed lotus flower, but completely withered by the sun's scorching heat. Not the sun, but the sun-like scorching heat of separation from both of you, the lotus of their heart completely withered and the petals of their emotions were fallen on the streets of Mathura. <laughs> How poetic. So Krishna and Balaram asked Rohini Devi, what should we do now? Can we just let them live like this? Rohini Devi said, no. They have been remembering both of you. They have been hallucinating. And now is time both of you should run to Brindavan. But there is a big problem. What is that problem? asked Krishna. And Rohini Devi said, Devaki and Vasudeva are very attached to both of you. They will never let you go. After so many years, they have got you both. Now they will not let you go. And even if I convince both of them, the associates of Devaki and Vasudev, Rohini Devi said, some of them are very strict and stringent. They won't let Devaki and Vasudev allow Krishna Balaram, both of you, back to Vrindavan. Dear devotees, at that point, Krishna wants to know which Brajbasi remembered him the most. And Mother Rohini, because she's in Vatsalirati, who do you think she thought missed Krishna and Balaram the most? That's correct, Mother Yashoda. And Kavi Karanapur describes, Shri Vrajarajni Mukhanam Duya Manani Mukhani Dhyanat Anubhuya Trayam Api Bhuya Nayana Payasa Vyaptam Asit. All three of them, Krishna, Balaram, and Rohini Devi, they held hands. And remembering how Mother Yashoda cried in separation from both of them, as described by Rohini Devi, they were crying. Krishna was sobbing and wailing so loudly. He told Mother Rohini, I want to go back to my mother. Mother Rohini said, instead my advice would be, send a messenger. Who was that messenger? Uddhava. So this idea of sending Uddhava was Mother Rohini's idea to Krishna and Balaram. And at that time Krishna was thinking, among the messengers whom should I send? And he was going through a whole list of different devotees. Kavi Karanapur describes, just like a person who has a very expensive necklace around his neck, he wears it or she wears it. But as they go through the duties and the chores, daily activities, they forget that there's a necklace on their neck. Everyone else can see the necklace except the person who's wearing it. So Krishna was thinking, whom should I send? The necklace around his neck in this discussion is Uddhava. And Krishna was going through different associates. And there was Balaram and the mother Rohini. They were able to see the necklace of Uddhava, which means Uddhava being the option. But Krishna couldn't. And at that time, Kavi Karnapur describes Krishna thought, Oh, I have a Chintamani Mala, a Chintamani Har, a necklace of priceless jewel in the form of Uddhava's friendship. I will call him. Now the question could be, why Uddhava? So Krishna chants a very beautiful verse, glorifying Uddhava. Let's chant. Mad Archanaya Khilabala Kurdanam Balye Pidabram Kalayan Babhuvaya Mat Prema Gopaya Samir Jamrujam Kaishora Kecha Stimamaya Uddhava Krishna speaks and he says Uddhava is so dear to my heart Mama Archanaya Khila Bala Kurdanam When Uddhava was a child his friends would say, come, let's jump, let's play, let's run, let's dance. And he would say, I haven't finished my puja yet. 
It is described Uddhava in his childhood had a very beautiful deity of Krishna. <laughs> and he would keep worshipping. And the friends would say, you've been worshipping for five hours. Come, let's go, let's play, let's run, let's dance, let's sing. And Uddhava would always say, I haven't finished my puja yet. And not just that. Because of the service, Krishna says, Uddhava's body would have goosebumps. Hair would stand on end, voice would choke, he would sweat, he would cry, he would tremble, tremble in love. And when his mother would ask, what happened? I have never seen you go through these symptoms. Krishna explains here that Uddhava would cover his symptoms by telling his mother, I just have some stomach problem. <laughs> Samira Jam Rujam, which means I have some gastritis. I have some kapapitta vayu, dosha imbalance in my body. I have some disease, some illness, my mother, because of which I don't know my body is going through some trembling. Krishna is telling Mother Rohini and Balaram that Uddhava right from childhood, he loved me so much. He loves me so much. He will love me so much that he gave up his playing with his friends and also covered his symptoms of ecstasy with the veil of the excuse of bodily illness. Krishna said, this Uddhava is so dear to my heart. He is my best friend. He is most intelligent because we already heard Vrishninam Pravaro Mantri Krishna Syadaita Sakha Sakshad Brihaspati Shisho Uddhava Buddhi Sattamaha. He is the direct disciple of Brihaspati. He is very intelligent, Krishna is speaking. He's, Uddhava is so intelligent that he can understand time, place, circumstance very well. He knows what to speak to whom, why, where and how which sometimes we fail and because of which there's misunderstandings and miscommunication because we want to say the right thing to the right person but at the wrong time or the time is right but the person is just in a bad mood or sometimes the mood is right the place is right the time is right but it's just not our business <laughs> right so therefore krishna says anudvega karam vakyam what to speak how to speak to whom where why and how so Krishna is saying, Uddhava is a perfect judge of time, place, circumstance. He is my best friend. He is very intelligent. He is a perfect devotee. He is respected in Brindavan, in Mathura. And I want him to taste Braja Bhakti, the devotion of Brindavan. So he is the perfect person. So as Krishna, Balaram and Mother Rohini decide this, Krishna is waiting for Uddhava. And lo and behold, by then Uddhava walks in. Kavi Karnapur describes, at that time as Uddhava came in, there were a lot of people walking back, back and forth. And Krishna didn't think that's the right place to speak to Uddhava. Sometimes that's a very good thing to do. Sometimes the place is just not right. We want to say something which is perfect to a person who is qualified. Maybe the time is correct, but just that it needs to be relished in a private setting, right? Just as they say, praise in public and reprimand in private. So Krishna held the hand of Uddhav, it is described, and took him to his inner chamber, inner quarters. And there, sitting, he made Uddhava sit next to him. Uddhava said, is everything okay? I see you cry, Krishna. The Acharyas described, Krishna took the grihitva panina pani. He took the hand of Uddhava in his palm and just didn't place it like that. He placed it on his lap. Very intimate. He gets the hand of Uddhava, clasps it into his palm and on his thigh, <laughs> keeps it close. And then tells Uddhav, I want to tell you something, which has been the deepest secret of my heart. I don't think there's anyone else who will understand. I want to speak my heart to you, Uddhav. Is it the right time to speak to you? And by then, because Uddhav is so much in sync with the mood of Krishna, both of them are already trembling in ecstatic love. They are crying. Dhrita chittaha. Their hearts have melted. And Krishna and Uddhava, being on the same page of emotions, they are ready to exchange a very beautiful conversation. Krishna starts to speak to Uddhava the glories of Mother Yashoda. Do we want to hear what Krishna said? Our Acharyas describe. Krishna is describing the Damodar Leela to Uddhav. 
Can we imagine Krishna speak about his own Leela? <laughs> How beautiful. Srila Jiva Goswami writes, Krishna is speaking from his perspective what happened in the Damodar Leela. Let's chant. Please kindly call and respond. Dhavam Dhavam Atitvaram Sachakita Pashyan Muhurmataram Griva Bhanga Manoharam Taralite Paschadrisho Vikshipan Stoba Kshubdhataya Nadhavitumalam Yavatada Katara Sheeta Sheeta Laya Chakara Kritaka Krodam Jananyamana so this is post Krishna breaking the pot. Krishna has already broken the pot and now Mother Yashoda is chasing him. So that's the scene in the heart. Krishna is telling, Dhavam Dhavam Atitvaram Hey Uddhav, I ran as fast as I could. <laughs> in Sanskrit the word Tvara means fast and Atitvara means very fast and Dhava Dhavati means to run. But when you say something more than once, that means overemphasis. So Krishna is saying, Dhavam, Dhavam, Atitvaram. I ran, I ran super fast. <laughs> and so Chakita, Pashyan Muhuhu Mataram. And at one point, I couldn't see my mother. So I paused. <sighs> I am gasping and palpitating. And Krishna is saying, I looked, Sir Chakita, I was astonished. I was faster than my mother. And I started looking around. Muhuhu, muhuhu, again and again. I started looking if my mother caught up with me. And how did I look? Griva bhanga. I bent my neck on all directions. Krishna is saying, I bent my neck in all directions. So Uddhava in his heart is feeling, didn't it hurt you? <laughs> so griva bhanga manoharam. No, no, it was very nice. It was very attractive even to me because the lines on my neck were like the lines in the inner side of a conch shell. I was looking from end to end and taralite pascha drishau vikshipan and as I moved my eyes, they became so restless. Hey Uddhav, it was like the khanjan birds in Brindavan. The khanjan pakshi is a very restless bird described by Rupa Goswami. So here Srila Jiva Goswami writes, that Krishna was saying, my eyes were like the Kanjan Pakshi, the black eyeballs were moving left to right and they were completely moist, drenched, not by the rain, but by my tears. But at the same time, I didn't have any more strength to run. There were four emotions which were fighting in my heart. I was afraid of my mother. I was tired. I was kind of lazy. At the same time, I was restless. So I didn't know what to do. My mother was hiding and seeing me from behind a pillar. <laughs> and I want to tell you honestly, Uddhav, she was faking anger. Now that I've grown up to be a big boy, now I understand. Huh? Kritaka Krodam. The anger in her heart was fake. She was just trying to teach me a lesson. And Sheeta Hashita Layam Chakar Kritaka Krodam Jananya Manaha. Janani, my mother's mind, which was actually very peaceful, but she was just faking anger. That anger also became completely pacified by looking at my baby form and the fighting of these four emotions in my heart. It's almost like Uddha wanted to know more. What conversation took place after? So Krishna is saying, Mother Yashoda yelled at me. What did she say? Please everyone repeat. Now this is from the side of Mother Yashoda. Dhurta. Which means Krishna, you cheat. Katyevam dhavishyasi. Kovagantavyam. Till when will you run away from me, O Krishna? And even if you run, where will you go? Huh? 
Mother Yashoda is telling Krishna, don't run. No, you've been running enough. Tanmadhava, don't run. Then Krishna said, what should I do then? Tishtha, just stand there. I am coming. But Krishna said, but I see that you have a whipping stick in your hand. And you're so angry. Your face is like a beautiful flower. And when the flower has red sprinkling powder of kumkum, the flower looks even more beautiful. So, oh Mother Yashoda, your lotus face has a red kumkum of your anger. It certainly looks very beautiful, but not very attractive for me. So therefore, please hide this lotus of your face. Throw away the stick. Then I will come. How does Krishna say this? Look at this. Please everyone chant. Mataha pataya panita Kharataram Yashtim namattadanam Karyam cheti kurushva Satya managhe Tadyamite sannidhim Krishna speaking his side. If you want me to come close to you, Sannidhim, then I have some conditions, O Mother. Mataha pataya panita kharataram yashtim na mattadanam. Two things. Throw away that stick first. And second, please don't speak like this to me. Please don't chastise me. Na mattadanam. Mujhe tadit mat karo. Tadan mat karo. Mattadanam. Karyam cheti kurushva. Satya managhe. O beautiful Mother Yashoda. Now some drama is going on. <laughs> oh beautiful, some buttering going on. Oh beautiful, wonderful, soft-hearted mother. If you throw away that stick and you throw away that anger, then I'm speaking the truth. Tad yamite sannidhim. Then I will come close to you. As soon as Krishna said this, Ityakaranya sutasya katara vacha. Hearing these helpless words of her son, Sa panito patayat. She threw away the stick. Yashtim durata eva vikshita dasau vishranta van dhavanath. Krishna said at that time, ah, I gave a big sigh of relief. And then I went close to my mother. But then there was a problem. There was butter all over my face. Somehow as I walked close to my mother, I wiped the butter. But there was still a problem. The shining effulgence of that butter was still there on my face. So what did I do? I went close to my mother and I was hiding my face. <laughs> mother Yashoda is here and I'm hiding my face. And she's asking me questions. I'm speaking without looking at her. She's saying, look at me. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> no, Krishna, look at me. No, look, I'm here. You told me to come close to you. I'm here. What more do you want? <laughs> Krishna saying at that time, San Mukham Nija Shishor Yada. My mother held my chin and turned towards her. And what did she say? Aho! Aho. Raja! Raja. Choranam. Choranam! O king among thieves! Mother Yashoda is holding the chin of Krishna because she can see the wonderful effulgence of that butter. Aho! Raja! Si Choranam! O dear king among thieves! Krishna immediately said, Chora stvat pitra gotraja. How can I be a thief? Mother Yashoda said, Then what is all this on your face? Krishna thought to himself, I thought I wiped it. What about the effulgence of the butter on your face? Why did you steal? Krishna is immediately saying, Oh dear mother, do you remember your father? Mother Yashoda said, Yes, I always remember my father. Do you remember his father? That's my grandfather. Yes, I remember him. Do you remember his father? Krishna is trying to change the topic. <laughs> so Mother Yashoda said, I haven't seen his father, so I don't remember him. But do you know his name? Mother Yashoda said, yes, I know his name because we have the family lineage recorded. Krishna said, what was his name? Mother Yashoda said, his name was Chor Ghosh. <laughs> so Krishna said, hmm. Hmm. You're saying I am the king among Chor. Let's talk about where this whole dynasty started from.
Mother Yashoda got to know that Krishna is throwing the buck back at her. She said, okay, forget all that. Tell me, how did that pot break? How did that pot break? And Mother Yashoda is asking very beautifully. So let's ask. Dadi Mandha Katham Khanda Oh Krishna, Dadi Mandha Katham Khanda How did that pot of butter break? Look at Krishna's answer. Dandoyam Parameshwara <laughs> Oh Maya, oh dear mother What is that thing in this world that doesn't happen without the will of God? You're asking me how that pot broke? Just by the will of God. <laughs> Is Krishna speaking false? No, he's God. <laughs> Dandoyam Parameshituhu. He said, this is the will of Parameshwara. Mother Yashoda is saying, okay, I tell you all these bedtime stories and you're throwing it like a boomerang back at me. Okay, okay, I'll change the question. Gritam Kishaya Pradat. Okay, you're saying that the pot broke by the will of the Lord. Then you please tell me, how did the monkeys enter the house? Krishna said, because you kept the door open. <laughs> Mother Yashoda said, okay, 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 I kept the door open, I agree. But Gritam Kishayaka Pradad, who was that person who was sitting on that motor, wooden grinding motor, and freely distributing butter to butter and ghee to everyone, who was that? Krishna is saying, Asau yena vinirmita. He who created the monkeys feeds the monkeys. <laughs> who else can feed? God creates the monkeys, God is feeding them, which is Him. So then Mother Yashoda says, Okay, 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 now answer properly. How did that pot break? So Mother Yashoda says, uh, when, uh, Krishna says, do you remember, oh mother, you put me down and you ran to save that milk? Do you remember? Mother Yashoda said, yes, I remember. Oh Maya, do you also accept that you wear very big, thick, tinkling ankle bells on your feet? Mother Yashoda said, yes, I always wear nice ankle bells on my feet. Krishna says, As puta dadi mandhasya ghata kamama dushtata? You ran with those ankle bells and as you ran, the ankle bells flew from your feet and hit the pot and broke. <laughs> and your ankle bells flew from your feet, broke the pot. What is my fault? What wrong did I do? Mother Yashoda said, being with monkeys, you're behaving like monkeys. You're talking like a monkey. In fact, even your face cut is looking like a monkey now. Your face has changed to a monkey. You, you're supposed to be Nara, not Va Nara. <laughs> Krishna starts to cry. And he tells Mother Yashoda, Oh Mother, I never thought you will be so ungrateful towards me. Some emotional drama now. Krishna is saying, I never thought you will be so ungrateful to me. I have done so much for you. Mother Yashoda said, Are Lala, oh little child, what have you done for me? So Krishna is saying, Kisha sa isha nirdishtha pravishtha sadma mushtaye krishta sarpi param mrishto maya kama madushtata. Oh dear mother, you kept the door open. The monkeys came from your village. They entered. They were stealing, breaking the pot and eating your butter. I went and held their hand. They took that butter, smeared it all over my face. And now, who is the criminal? You don't blame your father's paternal lineage for being a chore. You don't blame the monkeys. You don't blame yourself for keeping the door open. You don't blame your butter for being so tasty. Your ankle bell breaks the pot. I am guarding your butter. I am stopping and holding the monkeys. And at the end of the day, you're holding me responsible. This pastime of Damodar Leela, 
I was going through the folio and it's so unbelievable how many times Srila Prabhupada has quoted it. Srimad Bhag and these are not verses, these are Bhaktivedanta purports. Srila Prabhupada quotes Damodar Leela as follows Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 8, Text 31 purport. Canto 2, Chapter 7, Text 30 purport. Canto 6, Chapter 4, Text 47 purport. Canto 10, Chapter 9, Text 12 purport. Chaitanya Charita Amrit, Madhya Leela, Chapter 19, Text 205. Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Chapter 1. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 4, Chapter 12, Chapter 22, Chapter 33. I was amazed how much Srila Prabhupada has meditated on this pastime. Srila Rupa Goswami writes, When Mother Yashoda bound Krishna, finally, after all this drama, Rupa Goswami Pad writes, Please everyone chant, Gunair Tribhira Nargalaye Kila Jagatrai Vartina Chatur Mukhapura Saran Apiba bandha ya pranina Vrajendra mahishi bruve Kimi hate prabhavavalim Abandhi tanubhi gunai Sabalavan mukundas twaya Srila Rupa Goswami Pad writes In Sanskrit, the word guna means sattvagun, rajogun, tamogun but the word guna which means modes of nature also means ropes so Rupa Goswami Pad is writing gunais tribi ranar galai kila jagat trai vartina chatur mukha pura saran api babandhaya pranina oh dear Krishna you with the gunas sattvagun, rajogun and tamogun you have bound up everyone from Brahma to the ant in such a way that no one can free themselves but all glories, all glories to Mother Yashoda, who used gunas, not modes of material nature, but ropes. She used the ropes of love and bound he who frees everyone as Mukunda. Mother Yashoda ki? Yes. At this point, our Sridhar Swami, the original commentator to Srimad Bhagavatam, who is very dear to Sri uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sridhar Swami, he writes, Daru bheda nipuno pishadangri nishkriyo bhavati pankaja koshe. Sridhar Swami writes, Kashto yadhyapi vidhyate vanachare nugrena bhringe navai, tenai vatra nachidhyatem bujapalasha sidhu mattalina, itya swadhya viguda tattva matulam balyepi yenoditam, tam damo dara bhringa bhupa manisham vande yashoda sutam. This is mirror, this is following the footsteps and the mirror of the original words of Sridhar Swami. Srila Sridhar Swami writes, A bumblebee, a honeybee, when it's agitated, it can even break through and tear through wood. When a honeybee is very agitated in the forest, it can make holes even in the wood. However, when it gets attracted to the honey in the center part of a lotus flower, it gets so mesmerized, hypnotized, charmed, attracted, attached, allured, <laughs> absorbed in tasting the nectar of the world of the lotus that it is sunset and the petals of the lotus close and this honeybee who can actually break through the wood cannot even cut through the soft petals of a lotus why is this said Srila Sridhar Swami is saying Krishna is that honeybee who when angry can break through the wood of the demoniac forces he can break through Agasur, Bakasur, Dhenukasur, Arishtasur, Putanash Trinavarta, Kamsa, Chanur, Mushtika, Dantavakra, Kalayavana, Shishupal, all of them are wood. And Krishna as the honeybee is making holes into their lives. But when that bumblebee called Krishna gets attracted to the Vatsalya Rasa, the motherly love of Mother Yashoda, getting attracted to the lotus of her heart, when the petals close in the form of the ropes around his belly, he who can break through wood, can't even cut those ropes, just like a bumblebee cannot cut the petals of the lotus flower. Krishna speaking to Uddhav. 
and he finally says please everyone chant chapalyam ma prayasit mama shishu rasakau balyata swaira bhavat evam baddhastayaham sakridapi yadayam tena baddhosmi nityam krishna is telling uddhav oh dear uddhav my mother yashoda she bound me but who liberated me nand maharaj but i want to tell you my heart o oh uddhav my mother yashoda my mother mother yashoda bound me how many times once my father nand maharaj liberated me how many times once but o oh uddhav i'll speak my heart secret my mother bound me once but i am eternally bound by her my father liberated me once and because of that i am eternally bound by him my mother bound me and my father liberated me still i am bound by both of their love o oh, uddhav now my request to you is gacho dhav braj saumya pitro nau preeti mavah gopi na madviyoga adin mat sandesha i vimochaya krishna is holding the hand of uddhav and he says o oh, uddhav to those parents of my nanda and yashoda please go and convince them and pacify them and they are burning in the fire of separation couple of more minutes and then i'll stop krishna sends uddhav and uddhav comes to brindavan and now in this section he is speaking to that mother yashoda and that nanda baba about whom he heard straight from krishna Uddhav tells Mother Yashoda Don't worry Maya don't worry Krishna will come soon he will come and he will sit on your lap like before he will come very soon so mother yashoda asks uddhav can you tell me when he is going to come or should i go to mathura i want to go to mathura o oh uddhav but he told me not to come we went many times but we came empty handed nanda maharaj said when i wanted to go krishna told me you be here taking care of the cows and the calves please don't come to mathura so should we go to mathura how will we find him how should we find him so uddhav says oh it's very simple to find krishna you don't have to go anywhere he is in your heart <laughs> he is in everyone's heart imagine Mother Yashoda is floating in the tenth canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam, and Uddhav is speaking Sri Ishopanishad. Tad dure tachcha anti ke. He is very far yet so near. He is inside of everything yet outside of everything. He is telling Mother Yashoda, Krishna is everywhere. He is in your heart. Mother Yashoda stares at him, and Uddhav is saying, Actually, O oh Mother, Krishna is like fire. and your heart and your personality is like wood just like fire always lives inside wood and is never separated fire which is inside comes out so that krishna is in your heart and he came out and he is still there and mother yashoda is thinking yes your example is right when the fire comes out it ends up burning the wood that krishna in my heart has come out and through the fire of separation burned the wood of my existence what more should i do uddhav uddhav is telling mother yashoda please meditate <laughs> vichintya please contemplate mother yashoda can't understand all this because she is in the highest plane of spiritual love uddhav tells mother yashoda you please meditate and he will come mother yashoda says but devaki is so close to him how will he leave devaki and vasudev and come to me to that uddhav is saying who is close and who is far <laughs> there is nobody dear and there's nobody not dear there's no priya and there's no apriya krishna is the greatest he is god he doesn't envy anybody he has no enemies he has no friends mother yashoda said okay so what should i do he also misses me i miss him and you're speaking all this philosophy uddhav said actually he doesn't miss you 
don't think krishna is your son and that's the section that's given 42 don't think krishna is your son mother yashoda said stop <laughs> krishna loves me he accepts that he is my son and i accept that i am the mother and i love him too to which text 41 which is given an example is given by uddhav have we all ever rotated and swirled around in a spinning wheel or as a child played around rotating what happens when you stop you feel that the whole world is spinning right so uddhav gives that example he says actually oh mother when someone rotates and spins around they feel the whole earth is spinning but actually the earth doesn't spin mother yashoda said can, can I, kya chate ho bhai? what do you want to say can you keep it very simple uddhava said actually i want to tell you krishna is like the earth you have been spinning in motherly love so much that now when you pause you feel even he loves you like the child just like when someone's rotating and they stop they feel the earth also is rotating oh mother you have been rotating for so many years that i am the mother he is my child i am the mother he is my child i am the mother he is my child now when you pause in separation you feel he loves you actually he doesn't shila vishwana chakravarti thakur has written uddhava told mother yashoda krishna is everybody's son mother yashoda <laughs> what do you mean everyone's son shila vishwana chakravarti thakur writes uddhava said anyone who calls out to krishna in the mood of vatsalya rati krishna becomes their child in the past those who have called out in love krishna has become their child in the future those who call out in parental love krishna will become their child in the spiritual world also those who call out in parental love krishna becomes their child he is god first because you love him as a parent he has become your child he is not your child he is everybody's child not just child he's everybody's father everybody's mother everybody's ishwara not your child alone to which shila sanatan goswami says mother saraswati sat on the tongue of uddhav and flipped the whole thing because in sanskrit when there is a na you can rearrange the sentence and get the opposite meaning so uddhav is saying he is not anybody's son not anybody's mother not anybody's father not anybody's lord oh yashoda rani i have heard it from krishna he is your child <laughs> in this way dear devotees shila sanatan goswami pad in the brahad bhagavatam rita he writes although uddhava tried very intensely he couldn't shake nanda and yashoda's love even by an inch and the example given is you throw as much salt as you want in the ocean the water doesn't become more salty why because the volume of water is way more than the quantity of salt so uddhav was throwing the salt of philosophical opulent understanding but the oceanic love of nanda and yashoda has so much volume of water of parental love that uddhava couldn't shake it and the example finally given is when you wear a hat when you wear a hat and you have to look at the height of a very tall skyscraper what happens the hat falls behind you so uddhava came with the hat of philosophical learning and he's tried to convince the tall skyscraper of mother yashoda's heart and as he was trying his best he looked at the love of mother yashoda and his cap fell behind him and therefore uddhava lifetime after lifetime desires asa maho charana renu jusha maham syam brindavane kimaki gulmala taushadhinam i don't want to be uddhav i simply want to be a blade of grass in brindavan vande nanda prachastrinam pad renu abhikshnashah yasam harikathod geetam punati bhuvanatrayam ha eta param tanu brutom bhuvi gopavadvo govinda eva nikhilatmani rudha bhava vanchanti yad bhava bhiyo munayo vayam cha kim brahma janma bhiranant katha rasasya lifetime after lifetime uddhava lord brahma narad muni lord shiva everyone aspires to be in this holy wonderful land of shri brindavan all this nectar from our acharyas it is not our property it is shila prabhupad's property shila prabhupad very kindly bestowed that to us 
in the first canto first chapter first words purport Srila Prabhupada instructs Srila Prabhupada says those who want to seriously study Srimad Bhagavatam they should take shelter of the Acharyas so following that instruction of Srila Prabhupada we are reading this we don't have any authority on the writings of our Acharyas Srila Prabhupada said you can understand Bhaktivinoda Thakur through me so similarly as we conclude today's discussion let us offer our obeisances to Srila Prabhupada who translated all of this and gave it in his Bhaktivedanta purports and in a language which is freely available that is the English language my Guru Maharaj once said that English language is like the river in a village in a village the river is such that you can use it for drinking for bathing for washing your clothes washing your utensils and it always remains pure which means English is a language where there's poetry there's drama there's suspense novels fiction everything and that's the language of the whole world but what did Prabhupada do he mixed the Charanamrit of Krishna Leela into it <laughs> when you mix Charanamrit in the river the whole river becomes Charanamrit so Srila Prabhupada he gave Braja Leela Krishna Leela he poured it into the river stream of the English language and today in all the world in the, all the countries of the world we can sit, read, and take shelter of Srila Prabhupada's teachings and access this nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam. Grantraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gaur Premanande. If I have made mistakes, Pancha Gaurav Prabhu and. Well, I gotta get fast tomorrow, so you're